most of us are wasting many hours in a day. And that way we are wasting our potential. We're wasting lots of future opportunities because we're either too lazy or ignorant in the moment. Turden says that the average person wastes four hours in a day. So if you waste four hours in a day, you waste 28 hours in a week. So that's over 100 hours in a month. 100 hours a month is two and a half work weeks. And that adds up to half a year of work weeks per year. So when you put it that way, it kind of, <laughs> it kind of gets you. I don't want to waste half a year of work weeks per year. That's just too much. What would happen if you stopped wasting the opportunities that were in front of you? How efficient could you be? This morning I started the Jordan Peterson daily routine and here are the rules. I get up around somewhere between six and eight and then I work till 10, as, as hard as I can, flat out, every single day. Okay, so he works 100 hours a week, every week. That's crazy. Work starts between 7 and 8 a.m. and then I work for 14 hours. Eating breaks are allowed, however, only for the time that I actually eat. Now, I don't know if Jordan does sports ever, but I decided that I'm going to include sports in this challenge. Taking a break to go run outside or go to the gym, it helps you tremendously to get energy and stay focused. So what constitutes as work for me? I have a big exam coming up, so studying is going to be number one. So I'm going to be reading a business book. On top of that, I'm going to probably study Chinese. Another thing that I constitute as work in this challenge is just filming and editing videos. Then I have to do some basic stuff around the house, like doing the dishes or preparing myself a meal. And I'm gonna include that in the working category because otherwise I would just never be finished in the evening. Then in the evening I can read a non-fiction book for a couple of hours if I feel like for Charlie's Almanac. Now I don't know if I'm going to read it or not but I'll leave that as an option. I know for a fact that Jordan does read books. I do think that Jordan would include reading in his working hours because well if he doesn't with the amount of knowledge that he has then I don't know when he does it. Also I'm trying to focus on my work as well as I can because that is one thing that Jordan emphasizes. I work as efficiently as I possibly can. I'm always trying to do everything I can as fast as I possibly can. And I'm accustomed to that because like I said I've been doing it for I've been doing it for 30 years. So so I'm just curious how much can I actually get done in a week if I just put my mind to it and stay focused. And that's the key of this challenge. I'm very interested in trying to figure out how much I can possibly do in the shortest period of time all the time. I tried to figure out how much I waste time in a day and of course everyone defines wasting time differently. But for me it's probably something like four hours every day. In my waste of time is things like when I wake up I don't necessarily rise straight out of bed. I'm not working as efficiently as I can and that's a huge amount of my time wasted. If I would just keep my focus on the thing that's in front of me, I would do so much better. And that's the one thing I'm trying to improve during this challenge. I just have to say that I'm a huge fan of Dr. Peterson and his work. He has helped me tremendously on my personal journey. Currently, he is not in full health. He's still recovering from withdrawal symptoms from medicine. Hold on. So basically for the last 18 months, he's been in numerous hospitals in North America, in Russia, in Belgrade, in everywhere. The day after I finished this challenge, Jordan posted a video, so he's back home. What are the odds? I don't know. Quite small. And now he's finally back home. He's still not in full health, but he's way better than he was. So that's amazing news, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's go back to the video. I wish a quick recovery for him and all the best for him and his family. Today I started working at 7.42. It has been going really well. And uh, I have to say I have got a lot of things done. I spent the morning studying, then I did a job related thing. Then I ate lunch and I had a Chinese lecture. After that, I actually decided to take a small break and go to the gym. And right now I'm kind of back to work.
Okay, it's almost 10 o'clock now in the evening and it's been over 14 hours. I'm done with the day. I have to say that I'm so exhausted, like I didn't think it was going to be this hard. Like from maybe 6 p.m. onward, it became quite hard to keep a good focus in what I'm doing. So uh, I'm just kind of questioning, is it worth it? Because during the morning, I'm so much more productive in learning or just working in general. But uh, let's see how tomorrow goes. So it's second day, almost lunch time. Uh, all in all, it's going pretty well. Last night I had immense difficulties in staying focused. When the clock hit like 6 p.m., it became a breaking point for me. I really couldn't focus on studying anymore at all. I was just sitting there staring at the pages and nothing happened. <laughs> so then I went to a coffee house, ordered some tea and kind of started over and it helped. And I put it through so that I completed 14 hours. But at the end of it, I was really exhausted. And on top of that, it was already basically bed time for me. Like I didn't have time to do anything else during the day. I did nothing but, but worked basically and then before I went to bed I was like 30 minutes on my phone and that's it. As I kind of also want to hang on to my free time, today I decided to wake up a bit earlier. I woke up at 6.30. It might have been a mistake because I don't think I slept enough. I was really tired in the morning and I felt like I couldn't concentrate 100%. It was somewhere in around 75 maybe. I guess it's possible that I'm losing efficiency as a result. But hey, at least in the evening I have some time to do my own stuff. So it's it's kind of a brutal thing, you know, 8 hours or 10 hours, like that's easy. But when you get to 12 hours and 14 hours, it becomes really hard. The reason why it becomes really hard is that you have already put 10 hours of concentrated effort into something and then you have to keep on doing it. But as I believe, Jordan does it always with 100% of concentration. And that's the key factor in his success. If he didn't put in the hours, he wouldn't be where he is today. Okay, so day three. So yesterday evening, I decided to do a bit lighter work. I studied Chinese, then I did some editing, and then I read The Poor Charlie's Almanac. And it was a much better solution. The book that I'm reading right now for the test, it's super exhausting for the mind. After dinner, it's just, it, I can't do it anymore. You just cannot read it for 14 hours in a day. Yesterday evening, I had free time and it was nice, but another problem comes in. I don't think I'm sleeping enough. I have slept for probably less than seven hours per night. I wish I could sleep more, but if I sleep later, then I have to also work later. So that, that's really not an option right now. Today has been an off day for me. I have had zero motivation during this day. I just want to do something else. <laughs> I guess this is just something that I have to get used to. I don't know how Jordan does it. I mean, I don't know how to do this consistently day after day because I'm just not motivated enough to do this, at least not long term. But then I kind of started thinking that what if this is just a result of me concentrating on wrong things. Like right now I'm studying for a test, but it's not what I would do if I would have the choice to work on anything I wanted. I guess also the reason why I'm not motivated is because I'm not interested enough. I also went to the gym and that was fun because it's something else to do besides studying. <sighs> well, at least I'm getting things done. I mean, that, that's what's happening. I don't want to work anymore. I don't. 
Oh boy, this is tough. I feel like the only time I get to relax is the time I'm asleep. And even that I'm not gonna get to do <laughs> as long as I want to. And I really have got a lot of things done, but I feel like this has cut so much enjoyment out of my life. I think the most valuable thing I've got out of this so far is that I really have experienced how much you can get done if you just focus your mind solely on one thing. I have not allowed myself to take long breaks and so I've had single-handed focus on one thing for a long period of time and, and that is a really valuable thing. It makes your efficiency rocket sky high. Day five. I have had a good drive throughout the day. This morning I was really, really tired and I really would have wanted to sleep longer. It's, it's tough, like goddamn. And I feel like I'm rambling on about, oh, this is so tough. For some people, this is their life. Some people do this year after year. And it seems incomprehensible to me. Like I know it can be done. But the amount of sacrifices you have to make in order to do it is just mind baffling to me. I'm gonna go continue working until 10 p.m. And that's it, good night. Today is the last day. And I feel like last night was the first night that I actually slept enough. I couldn't believe how great it felt to sleep a good night after sleeping not so well for a week. I am in a way better mood right now. And also I can focus better on what I'm doing. Today and yesterday have both gone pretty well, but I have to say that I have given myself some slack. I haven't been super strict with the schedule. I've worked almost all the time, but for example, today I took like a 40 minute walk outside and yesterday I went out running and it took also quite a long time. So I wasn't super strict with those things, but I mean, I don't think that's the point. If your whole life was built around you working and you wouldn't be able to do anything else, then it wouldn't be a very enjoyable life. My experience from this is quite positive. I think with minor adjustments, this kind of a lifestyle would be very good for you if you want to achieve results on what you're working on. The thing I would do is I would give myself a couple of hours to chill in the evening. That, that's what's missing out of my life. The downside in doing this is that you basically have no free time. And the only time you get to relax is when you're sleeping. And as it turns out, that's really not enough. I haven't had space to think. If you do nothing than feed and feed information into your brain, you kind of never analyze it. Even when you're not thinking about something, your mind is still working in the background and it's processing this information that you have got in there. I do miss having the opportunity to do what I want. Like if I want to go see a movie or if I want to take a couple of hours during the day to go in the nature, I miss those kind of things. But what I do get out of this is starting to work early in the morning and really focusing on your work. Yeah, ah, I don't know. Do these observations seem interesting? I don't know. They seem pretty obvious to me. One thing I have to admit is the last few hours in the day, you are really tired during those. I was able to perform better during those hours than I expected. You're not as efficient, you're not as alert and focused as in the morning or in the day. You still can get things done. And I think we, we are able to work a lot if we know that there will be a time when we are not working a lot. We can work three days from morning to evening if we know that the fourth day is totally off. There's nothing during that day. And that's fine, but you have to get those days where you don't do anything, or at least parts of the day. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I enjoyed making it, even though it wasn't fun during many times. I do feel like I learned a lot of things. So, thank you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Yeah. 
I guess it's back to work. Back to work again. Good times, good times. 